Um, hey guys, welcome to another Streloxy++ tutorial. And uh, today we'll get into the standard template library a little bit. I know that you haven't heard from me for a while, but um, the, here's another tutorial, or maybe perhaps series. And um, well, we're going to be covering the standard template library, or a little bit, and uh, because I've seen some people try to write code um, utilizing utilities from the standard template library, especially the vector, the list, and um, they have had some troubles, so I'll just go over it quickly. I mean, even if you know it, a review wouldn't hurt, hopefully. So, let's get started right away, and what we're going to be looking at today is called a vector. And it is basically a, b a better array. That's basically what it is. So let's get right into it and we'll include the header file for the vector, which is just vector. And we'll include iostream to have input and output capabilities. And then using namespace std, we'll bring everything in vector and iostream to the global namespace so we can access it without putting std colon colon before everything uh, because vector is encapsulated in the standard namespace also. So now we have our main function which doesn't take any parameters for now and um, here we'll decline a v uh, define a vector so we type in vector and since a vector is a templatized class which means it's a class that uh, basically stands sits in the template we have to give uh, template parameters what type um, of data is the vector going to store so we're going to give it integers for now and then we have to give a name to our vector so we're going to just call it v and this is a perfectly legal declaration and so is this what oops mm, I don't know why that happened but uh, what this means is that it allocates um, it, it makes 25 elements in our vector and initializes them all to 0 because the 0 is the default value for an int integer. Um, what the previous declaration uh, tells us is that it just makes uh, a vector of integers and doesn't do anything to it. So, uh, let's see. Uh, we, we made our vector v and now we'll use, we'll get right into it and we'll use the the best function perhaps uh, of a vector, or my favorite, is v dot push back. And here we put an integer because our vector stores integers, right? So we put 54. And um, now um, we will put a quick loop for i.v.size H here is another um, another really nice feature of the vector and we can actually put this inside a function and our function is going to be print vector um, vector mm. so we have to put it uh, put a template on it. Template type dev uh, type name t. Uh, print vector vector t uh, vector t um, uh, v1. So we're gonna call a vector v1, and then we're just gonna put this for loop in there. Right instead we v1 dot size. So, this is just basically a function for printing a vector. It doesn't matter too much. Um, um, and let's see. V1, we want to see out v1 dot at i. And that's pretty much our whole function. So, what this 
is is a function called print vector that takes a, a templatized vector, right, a vector with a type of t uh, that's going to be called v1, and then we we um, go in a for loop and uh, we iterate over each element, we increment over each element so until i becomes uh, one less than v1 dot size which is the size of the vector and then we just output every single element and what the at accessor is, is it basically is um, is a bounds checked uh, vector accessor so it goes to the place and it checks if it's out of bounds and then it throws a out of bounds exception and if it isn't then it just returns the element at that point so um, here is our print vector function and so we're just gonna call print vector on v and um, see if this works yep it worked so we just need to put this sync function and get function at the end of our program oops that was not supposed to happen my bad so compiling and now see it outputted 54 because we pushed back 54 into our vector so um, now we have a vector of 54 and let's put another pushback call um, 45 and now let's run the program and when it runs the program it outputs 5445 because the first element is 54 the second one is 45 and I should probably put a space after this or a new line so I'll just output another new line a new line for our purposes so um, we've seen the pushback method uh, there's also a, c a few more methods that are really cool uh, with vectors uh, for example, with the, a vector, well, I have a v, which is a vector of integers, and I'm gonna use the for loop, uh, a for loop, to initialize my vector. Um, 50. I'm gonna have 50 elements, and I'm just gonna initialize v dot pushback i. Right. So all this does is it initializes my my um, vector, my 50 elements of my vector, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. and going. So we'll run it. And when we print the vector, we'll get all the numbers from 1 to 50. As you can see, here they are. Not much effort required, eh? So, um, we've, we've seen the power of the pushback function. Now we can uh, use the popback function. So we can say v dot popback, um, and say we want to erase the last twenty-five elements. For int i uh, i is less than twenty-five i plus plus and then we do v pop back <coughs> excuse me so um, oops v pop back will pop back the last 25 elements of the vector and um, it will uh, remo remove them basically from the vector so when we run it again it will only show us the first 25 elements, up, uh, all numbers up to 25. And here it is, or up to 24. So uh, I'll be back with the next uh, next part of this lecture soon.